Hello. I'd like to share with you some words spoken by Jesus. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It was, by all accounts, a terrible storm, and all those on board cried out for help. One crew member was tied to the helm in an attempt to keep the ship, the Greyhound, on course. John Newton had time to think and recalled his mother's Christian teaching, whereupon he gave his life to the Lord as the tempest raged about him. The date was the 21st of March, 1748, and John Newton died to his former life as a coarse and hardened slave-trading sailor to become a follower of Christ at the age of 39. He went on to be an Anglican minister and worked with William Wilberforce to abolish slavery. With his memory failing, his dying words were, I remember two things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great saviour. His physical death came when he was 88. However, he died to sin and came alive to Jesus at the age of 39. He lamented his previous faithless life. He, in one sense, mourned the former life he had lived and was full of regret and remorse. However, his tears turned to joy when following his conversion, he found comfort and blessing in his new life. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He mourned and nursed great sorrow in the way that he had treated people of color as a brutal slave trader. His remorse was genuine and he derived great comfort knowing that the Holy Spirit had inspired him to work with others to rid the world of the horrors of the slave trade. Newton's change from mourning to faith is vividly expressed in the hymn he wrote about his conversion. Amazing Grace was written in gratitude for the way in which God had turned Newton's life around. The opening verse captures Newton's feelings at the time. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. The haunting tune of Amazing Grace is reminiscent of a lament, yet the words speak of hope and better times. Newton went from sorrow over the life he had lived to the joy of a new life God granted in Jesus Christ. He had made mistakes, but he knew he was a sinner, valued and loved by God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. In The Happiness Secret by J. John, he reminds us that the meaning of the word comfort has changed over the years and originally meant to bring strength or to uphold. Applied to our saying, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted, this gives the sense that those who mourn now can be upheld now and in the future. Even in the darkest depths of despair, God, through Jesus Christ, can lead us into peace and blessing. The prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament has words that may have resonated with John Newton. When Isaiah says that God wants the best for us, to give us a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. So God wants to give us a garland 
oil of gladness and a spirit of praise. And Jesus was familiar with the words of Isaiah. He read from the scroll of Isaiah in the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown. And maybe these words were in his mind when he addressed the crowds in his sermon on the mount and declared, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Your ashes will become a crown of beauty. Your mourning will be replaced with the oil of gladness and your spirit of despair turned into a garment of praise. And so when Jesus addressed the crowd, his blessing was for those with remorse and for those becoming self-aware of their need to change, which is the first step to repentance forgiveness and God's consolation. We may mourn, but we shall, like Newton, be comforted and blessed with new life that makes a difference. Have you missed watching the tennis at Wimbledon this year? Well, we remember the great John McEnroe. He won Wimbledon three times often questioning the umpire's decision with the words, you can't be serious. And J. John, in The Happiness Secret, says there is pressure on us today to be party people, bouncing from one happy event to another. You can't be serious, after all. There's no time to be serious. Life has so much to enjoy. Well, there are times in life that require seriousness and gravitas. And as Christians, we would seek to have a seriousness about ourselves occasionally. Not that we eschew happiness or pleasure. If we are to be the people of God, the people God intended us to be, and to discern who we are in Christ. Mourning our missteps and failures is the prequel to true comfort and happiness in God and his Son, Jesus Christ. We may mourn or feel low about the world or ourselves sometimes, but the Gospel says we shall be comforted. God, through Jesus Christ, has secured for us true joy and contentment. Former slave trader John Newton discovered this and prompted amazing grace. And it's something we can discover for ourselves too. And perhaps it's what you're looking for right now. <laughs>